Hi everyone, welcome to Meet SRU faculty. I'm Melissa Sorrentioni and today our guest has had a lot to talk about with all the achievements she has had throughout her career. Business professor Dr. Teresa Vita is here to talk about her professional experiences. Welcome. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. So what made you want to teach in the field of marketing and business? I, I always tell my students um, one of the things that really excited me about marketing was I love to shop. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we're all consumers. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I liked to shop um, and I had a really good adjunct business professor when I was an undergraduate mm -hmm. who really engaged his students and got me excited about the field. Mm -hmm. um, I originally started out as a chemistry major. Oh, wow. Yes, completely different, change. yes. And I think a lot of our students, you know, when you, when you come to college, there are many instances where you're not sure what you want to do, so you right. test things out. But mm -hmm. I, I found that when I took this one particular class, I got really excited mm -hmm. about marketing. I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to, to know more about business. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was one of my first experiences with um, as an undergraduate, yeah. uh, learning about marketing. And right. then I was very fortunate, um, after I received my undergraduate degree in marketing, mm -hmm. I worked um, in the marketing department on an assistantship okay. uh, for a couple of professors, but one professor in particular. And he was working on a research study that looked, at the time, lawyers didn't advertise on television. Um, at okay. the time, oh. you know, back when I was in graduate school, which I'm completely dating myself. Oh, but no. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that long ago, though, mm. you know, with all this technology. No, no, you know? but he was yeah. saying that uh, he wanted to study that, you know, what would be the impact on consumers' perceptions if a lawyer did go on TV and advertise their services, which now is very commonplace. Right. So he had interviewed a lot of consumers. He showed them some kind of mock TV ads, and he actually had me do the data analysis. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I took all those paper surveys. Now we do so much electronic uh, in terms of surveys. Right. But I was able to take some of the, I, I took those paper surveys and actually man, manually entered all of the data into a database and then worked with him on analyzing it. Okay. And that got me really excited about pursuing uh, a PhD in marketing. I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to research. I wanted to be somebody like him mm -hmm. that taught students. Right. Um, you know, that, that was always actually my first, I, I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah, and then in the yeah. marketing field, you found exactly. that out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But I liked the research as well. I right. thought the research was really exciting. Right, so right after you got your PhD, did you go straight into teaching then marketing? You didn't work at a marketing company or anything like that? Well, I there was, um, why well, I, I got, received my undergraduate degree at Cleveland State and then my master's degree at Cleveland State. Okay. And then after my master's degree, I went um, to work first for Cap Toys. Okay. Um, they were located in Akron. Um, they mm -hmm. were one of the first toy companies to come up with the Stretch Armstrong. Oh. And all of those candy confectionery goods that spin and lit up. Yeah, all that fun stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was my very first job. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a lower level entry position, you know, like many of our students will start out. Right. And. Um, and then I, I worked there for about a year and a half, uh, mm -hmm. and then I got an offer at Sherwin-Williams, the Sherwin-Williams company in okay. downtown Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So I worked for their corporate offices. Mm -hmm. um, I started in customer service, okay. which was, um, it was a really good job. It was a very service-oriented, telephone kind of job. Right. But it really gave me a good feel of the company, mm -hmm. how the organization worked. Right. Um, I learned about all the functional departments, mm -hmm. accounting, finance, marketing. Yeah. Um, from there, I went into the logistics department. Okay. So I worked with a lot of our plants. I worked with the marketing department. Um, I did a lot in terms of product forecasting. Oh, okay. So I, logistics is a part of marketing. Right. Um, so that was actually my my experience was really in transportation and logistics. Okay, yeah, and I feel like that, mm -hmm. you know, working at an actual marketing company like that actually gave you more of a feel for when you teach your students. Oh, absolutely. You know, more experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And both from a marketing standpoint, because I did have, um, there was a lot that I had to do with the marketing department. We worked with a lot with the plants when mm -hmm. I was in the logistics department, the product planning department. Yeah. But we had a lot to do with the marketing department as well because they would, you know, when they were running a promotion, you needed to make sure that there was enough paint on the shelves. Mm -hmm. 
So you had to work closely with production as well. Yeah. Okay, so those things were tied together. Mm -hmm. So I bring that background to my students, but I think it's also good that, you know, I feel it was good for me to have that corporate experience because I can bring to them Okay, when you start off in a job, it might not be the job that you wanted. Right. You know, when you graduated from college, but hang in there. Those entry level positions are invaluable. Yeah. You'll learn so much about the organization. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you want to start there and then right. work your way up. You know, know, see what's out there and see yeah. what excites you and what interests you. Yeah. Um, I also, I think, I, I always tell my students, you know, as an undergraduate student, I was one to say, oh, I don't need to network. You know, networking is not important. Okay. You know, it was my grade point average. Mm -hmm. Employers never looked at grade point average. But yeah. your networking skills, your writing skills, right. your oral presentation skills, mm -hmm. you, we say it all the time, but they are so very important. Yeah. You know, and I, I think so more, more so nowadays in terms of getting a job and, and finding a job in your field. You need right. to be able to make those connections, and it is very important. It's just not lip service. Right. So I think I bring that to my students as well, having experienced that firsthand. Yeah, and that's great because the reason why I laughed at that is because I was like you with the networking. Yeah. When I was a freshman, I was like, oh, it, that's not a big deal. I don't need to, you mm -hmm. know, emphasize that or practice it, but whatever. I put it on the back burner. Right. But now my professors are like networking is very important. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all you should do. You know, not all, but that right. should be a priority. You know, and I, f I find that networking, even with your peers, is great. It is. You know, any, everyone you come across, you should network with. Mm -hmm. it's, it just reminds me of the, uh, what do they say, the with Kevin Bacon? Uh -huh. the, oh, they talk about the seven degrees okay. of Kevin Bacon. I don't think I've ever heard, I've ever heard of that. It's, um, it has to do with, you know, you'll know someone that knows someone that knows Kevin Bacon within oh. seven <laughs> degrees of separation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it has everything to do with networking yeah. and making those personal connections. Right. And, th and that is very, very important. Yeah, definitely, especially in the business world. And mm -hmm. we're both with the communication department, being mm -hmm. that I'm a journalism major. So it's all business. You know, I can all. see. I can definitely see that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So tell me about your student directed re research projects. Um, ever since I've been here, I've worked on a number of um, student-directed research projects. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, I've worked with a couple different companies and nonprofit organizations. Uh, I've worked with Eaton Park uh, okay. on a couple different occasions, mm -hmm. helping them refine their service quality, um, just assessing customer perceptions of various aspects of their service. Right. Um, I've also worked with the Boy Scouts, um, and probably one of the the service learning projects that I really enjoyed the most um, mm -hmm. was working with the Central Blood Bank. Okay. Uh, I like student-directed research projects for a number of reasons. Uh -huh. um, first of all, it allows you to lecture in class, but then to really have your students engaged and apply the material. Right. Um, the second, I think, really great reason behind doing large groups of student, you know, under-directed or undergraduate research programs mm -hmm. is that you can really make a big difference in the community, you yeah. know, whether it's on your college campus or in the community at large. Mm -hmm. And one of the service learning activities we did with the, um, the Central Blood Bank actually revolved around a personal experience of mine where, okay. um, this was a few years back, my cousin had passed away. Um, mm -hmm. She was a very young mother. She mm -hmm. had a child um, who had just turned three years old oh, wow. and um, she was diagnosed with um, adult leukemia. Okay. And she needed a bone marrow transplant, and it was very difficult to find a match. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that the Central Blood Bank does, is they also run the marrow drives. Okay. So when she passed away, um, I worked with a couple of my market research classes, and we organized a big marketing campaign to, to recruit students to actually donate blood, to recognize the importance of donating blood, mm -hmm. but also to, um, to participate in the marrow program as well and oh, to wow. generate awareness on campus as to what that is and how important it is, mm -hmm. you know, for us to become involved. Yeah. So I feel, I mean, I feel like I did honor to her in that way. I mean, she yeah, made such a definitely. difference in so many lives. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, even, you know, after she passed, you know, what a huge difference her life made and mm -hmm. just bringing awareness, you know, to a right. lot of different people in my own family, in my own extended family. Mm -hmm. um, but I was also to kind of, because I wasn't aware of leukemia or the blood, the marrow right. registry at all. I didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. So to be able to generate that awareness and, and have my students participate and, and they really did a great job. I mean, they 
designed um, a very elaborate promotional campaign. Um, mm -hmm. They designed posters. They had contests. Oh, wow. They generated all, all different kinds of activities. Yeah. Uh, we, we generated a survey. Mm -hmm. We were able to assess the students in terms of their awareness before and after the campaign. Mm -hmm. So they did a really great job. And I was very great. proud of them. That's and a very good experience for them as well. It was. And a lot of them carried that on. Um, yeah. Even after we did that project, in uh -huh. subsequent years, they became involved oh, wow. with the Marrow Drive. And yeah. That so is that great. Was See, it can lead to bigger things, and you're doing well for the com you're doing good for the community as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about. Exactly, mm -hmm. very true. So I saw you've been to a few international conferences and presentations. Where have you all gone for these? Um, they've primarily been international conferences. Oh, okay. In terms of location, oh, however, okay. they're international organizations. Okay. So the American Marketing Association, um, okay. you know, has a presence overseas, but also has obviously a very large presence mm -hmm. um, in the states. Mm -hmm. um, so I've presented just a lot of my research mm -hmm. um, at these different conferences, oh, okay. um, and the research has run the gamut. Um, a colleague and my a, a colleague of mine and myself um, have worked on a research project to assess. Um, students' perceptions of travel abroad. Okay. Um, hmm. You know what their perceptions are of program travel abroad programs before mm -hmm. and then after. Many of our right. students take, um, tr you know, do the travel abroad, oh, the study yeah. abroad. You know, right. and even not for a, an entire semester or, or a month long travel abroad. Yeah, it might just, like just a be week. a week spring break. Mm -hmm. You know, in Italy. Yeah. Um, so we've we've kind of looked at their perceptions um, in different areas. Um, mm -hmm with respect to student abroad. Yeah. Um, I've also worked with another colleague at, at assessing student and faculty perceptions on the value of undergraduate research. Okay. Um, and then I've also done quite a few conferences with research articles in my own discipline. Oh, great. And it's taken me all over the United States, which is kind of nice. You yeah, get to meet your colleagues nice. in different parts of the Yeah, the definitely United get to States. travel a little bit. It is. Which is always nice. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Did you ever get to go any place warm? Hawaii. <laughs> that oh, was probably wow. the the farthest for a conference. The farthest That's west. Great. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. Changes up the scenery a little bit, and it's nice that you get to present, you know, your research as well as learn about other researches that are going on. Yes, and and if I may, yeah, uh, pitch. Um, we actually have our undergraduate research symposium uh, occurring. Um, on mm -hmm. our campus, okay. where um, students who have worked with a faculty member on undergraduate research um, have submitted abstracts, oh, okay. and um, those accepted as abstracts will be presented at our symposium. Oh, um, Phil Tramdeck is going to kill me because I don't know remember the date oh, no. <laughs> when it's coming up. <laughs> I believe it's it's the second, okay. third week in April. Second, third week in April. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. But we have students from all around campus, from many multiple disciplines, oh, wow. that will be presenting their research either through in poster form or making oral presentations. Yeah. And That's and great. it's a great venue because it exposes many of our students to what conferences are are like. Right. Where you're going to make that 15 to 20 minute oral presentation or present your poster, and people mm -hmm. are going to be asking you about your research. Yeah. Great experience so, yes. for them. I would encourage all of our students to just drop by. It's going to be in the in the Bob. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a day long event. Okay. Um, there'll be breakfast and lunch. Oh wow! So if you just want to stop in, grab a sandwich, look at some posters, hear a presentation. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, get more students involved and aware of, what, of what's going on on campus. Exactly, and it's another activity too for our students. You know, if if mm -hmm. maybe not being part of a student organization is your thing, right. you know, maybe you have an interest in working with a faculty member on something that excites you, a research topic that excites you. Yeah, definitely. So. There's always ways to get involved. It is always. Mm. So, all right, when we come back, I'll be talking to Dr. Vida about what she does to help Slippery Rock University. Hi, this is Madison from TV Naturally in the Library. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hello, Hi, I'm Lori Martela from the History Department. Hi, I'm Dr. Marshall from the Communication Department. Hi, my name's Rita. My name's Meg Mee. Hi, my name's Chris Liberty. I'm Steve Luter, a student here at Slippery Rock. Hey, I'm Cody Moody. And I'm Tim Durr. You're watching Channel 27. Channel 27. Or you're watching WSRU 27. Channel 27. And you're watching WSRU TV Channel 27. Make sure you tune into Channel 27. And we watch uh, WSRU Channel 27. And I'm watching WSRU Channel 27. And you're watching WSRU Channel 27. And I watch WSRU TV Channel 27.
Welcome back to Meet SRU Faculty. I'm Melissa Serencioni and I've been talking with business professor Dr. Vida about her accomplishments throughout her career. So you're involved in many organizations for the university. Tell me about some of those and what you do for them. Uh, well, that, it's, it's been quite a few different ones that have spanned the years. Mm -hmm. um, we have, there's different organizations on the university level, the college level, the department level. Um, probably one of the ones that I've been with for the longest tenure has been the, the Center for Student Research, for Undergraduate Student Research. Okay. Um, actually, uh, Dr. Patrick Burkhart started, actually started that. He was really the founding father um, mm -hmm. of that particular idea and he really established it. Um, and then when he decided to leave to do other things, I took that over um, mm -hmm. along with um, uh, Mary Ann King. Okay. Um, and we were able to run that for a few years. Mm -hmm. and, and then it got transferred to um, Phil Tramdeck in the library. Mm -hmm. um, and he's really taken it to a, a whole new level. You know, oh, wow. I think we have a presence uh, of individuals, both students and faculty from each of the colleges. Okay. Um, we've, I think, generated awareness um, to mm -hmm. administration. Right. Uh, not that they don't realize the importance of it, but the importance for you know resources to you help our students. It. Yes, yeah. um, out of it has come grant money for mm -hmm. students to actually yes, oh, wow. apply for grants. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to write a research proposal and to write a grant and to receive some money to help them work on their projects. Oh, wow. So there is a lot more out there now mm -hmm. um, in terms of student resources to help them if that's something that interests them. Right. And as as I mentioned, we also have the um, the big symposium every annually. Right. For, to, to actually showcase and highlight the work of our students. Yeah, which is great because that also brings awareness to what they have done. Yes. You know. Yes, their hard work and mm -hmm. and it, it does it does prepare them for, um, you know, professional life mm -hmm. when they you know make presentations of their projects at a job interview. Right. Um, or when if they go to a professional conference, mm -hmm. you know, they'll have the practice and yeah. the feedback. Yeah, you definitely, know. which is always good. It is. <laughs> That's always a good thing to have experience, you know, at the college level. So you're you're a little more prepared for right. when you go out into the professional world. Exactly. And Alyssa, yeah. like we mentioned off camera, I mean, mm -hmm. it's your chance to make mistakes or right. or to receive very friendly feedback as to, oh, maybe you should try it this way or do something different or, yep. you know. Yeah, definitely. It's, so it's our a good time to that. experiment, you know, yes. and figure things out. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So a lot of your research interests are very diverse oriented, mm -hmm. which I think is great because a lot of people are hesitant to talk about diversity. You know, I saw the one with, um, um, elaborate for me, because I kind of forget the whole gist of it, but it was with the male and the female, the differences between. Oh, that's, yes, that is, um, that is probably one of my prime research focuses. Prime, yes. yes. Okay. Um, I started this research stream a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, just because I saw in the old, in, in my the dynamic of my family and with my friends mm -hmm. that there there appeared to be differences between how men and women look at things. Yes. There are those books there out there. Yes, yeah. men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, so I, I my research area has been in the interest of it, in the I've been interested in information processing how mm -hmm. men and women differentially. Um, pay attention to different things in ads mm -hmm. um, and and actually take in different pieces of information right. and actually store that information differently. Yeah. So a big part of my research stream has been looking at how men and women form categories. Okay. How they form mem memory structures or cognitive structures mm -hmm. and how that influences subsequent processing. For example, when they take in information from an ad, they're going to put it in a different category. Then when uh -huh. they go to the store and they see that brand, men and women may recall different pieces of information, mm -hmm. which might factor into their ultimate purchase decision. Right. Or a decision that doesn't lead to actual buying. Yeah, definitely. So, that's, that's interesting, you know, to think about because those are things that, you know, we don't think about really on a daily basis, you know, uh, our different thought processes and stuff like that and how distinct they actually really are. Yes. Is that what you found? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, there was, um, I did a, a, pr a number of pretty extensive research studies, mm -hmm. um, but was able to confirm, st st statistically speaking, that there are definite differences in how men and women both attend to information, process that information, and remember that information. Oh, yeah. And I really enjoy that research stream. Mm -hmm. um, it is a lot of consumer psychology. I like right. the, 
the psychology aspect of consumer behavior. Okay. And I also teach consumer behavior. Yeah. So a lot of those things supplement my lectures and classes, yeah, um, both in definitely. the market research class and the consumer behavior class. Yeah, that's great that you tie those in together because I'm sure, you, you know, obviously when you research, you learn m new things, I'm sure, every time you, you're researching. So you can bring that into the classroom and show your students your new findings and stuff like that. Absolutely. I think it, I think it keeps um, me current in the yeah. field and it also allows for me to make sure that I'm giving students current information but also to let them see application right. of what we talk about in class. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Alyssa. You're welcome. It was great talking with you and learning a little bit more about you. You as well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So while well, that is all the time we have for today, thank you for watching Meet SRU Faculty. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.